Hello artists! Today in art class we're going to be learning about monarch butterflies and then when we're done watching that part of the video we are going to be creating our own monarch butterfly. So you're going to need some paper and a pencil to start and then you'll need some coloring materials, um, a pair of scissors, and I even used a tiny bit of glue back here. Just a glue stick would work fine. So let's get started. And now it's time for some more amazing animals. Number 49, the amazing monarch butterfly. These lovely orange, black and white creatures do absolutely incredible things. Found in North, Central and South America and a few other places in the world, the monarch butterfly starts life by being born on a milkweed leaf. They quickly fatten up to become colorful caterpillars and it's not long till they start the incredible transformation from pupa into something really rather magical. Wing Commander Schmetterling ready for takeoff. In only a matter of hours, the monarch is ready to fly. I'm free! From baby egg to butterfly in just around a month, it's one of the most startling transformations of the whole animal kingdom. The monarch butterfly can travel thousands of miles. Whee! And when the wind is right, even to Great Britain. Welcome to Great Britain. Some of the journeys are so long, only the butterfly's grandchildren get to make it home. Sometimes resting in the same tree as their grandparents before them. There's some space on this branch, Keith. Oh, great, man. Everyone is here. The monarch butterfly certainly deserves to be called an amazing animal. So today in art class, we're going to work on making a monarch butterfly. I'm going to have you take a sheet of white paper, and you'll need a pencil to start. And I'm going to have you fold that paper sideways, kind of like you would if you were making a card or a book. And when you're done folding it, open it back up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down about halfway. And I'm gonna have you draw a line, or a line that looks kind of like an upside down letter V. And then we're gonna have the line come down alongside the fold almost to the bottom, and then we're gonna curve it back up. Now, you might wanna just curve the top, you might not want like a point at the very, very top. And then we're gonna work on the wings. So I'm gonna have you start where the head is, and we're gonna just draw a curvy line up like that. And then we're gonna make it curve down a little bit like that. And then it's going to come straight across like that. Underneath here, you're going to make, it's going to be a slightly smaller part of the wing and it's going to be shaped a little differently. It's going to come out like this and curve, and it can be a little bumpy too, and then it's gonna curve back up to the body. Now, we're not gonna draw it on the other side. We're gonna use this side as a pattern. So you're gonna need a pair of scissors, and with your scissors, I'm gonna have you just cut out right along the edge of the wing like this. You can cut right next to it too if you're worried about cutting on the line. That's what I usually do. I cut right next to it. And I cut all the way around like that. And you can just cut down around the bottom of the body off like that, but don't cut on this side yet. We'll do that in a little bit, but you are going to need to cut the wing, the top part of the wing too. And then you can just cut down that fold and just take that little top piece out like that. All right, so now that we have one wing done, we can fold it over 
like this. And we can trace around the edge. I would hold it down since paper kind of tends to wiggle sometimes. Whoop, like that. And when you open it back up, you will have a symmetrical butterfly. You can go ahead and cut out that side. We'll add that line in the middle in just a minute. that scrap off to the side. Oh, and I just realized what I forgot. Um, we need to have little antenna coming out at the top. So what you could do is maybe use one of your scraps of paper and you can, you don't actually have to cut them apart all the way. If you kind of make it go up and then come back down. And then go up and add a little circle if you want on the end. Um, you can then cut that out and we can just glue it behind the head with a glue stick. Easy peasy. Or you can make them any way you want. If you have another idea, or if you want to curl paper and make them really curly, or might have been a little easier to color this first, but that's okay. All right. So since I kind of kept them together on the bottom, I can put some glue right there. I'll show you with my glue stick. Or it might be even easier just to put glue on the back of the butterfly's head. And then I'm gonna take that and stick it on there like that. Now my butterfly has little antenna. So we're gonna talk about the parts of the butterfly so we know what we're talking about. These are the wings, and this part is the body. So we have the head, and it has a little curly tongue called the proboscis, that sort of spiral. And if you wanna give your butterfly some eyes, you can go right ahead. We have the feelers, or the antenna. We have the thorax and the, ab the, thorax and the abdomen. And we're gonna be working on the wings and adding the little shapes that are called scales. Before we do that, let's take our pencil and just draw our line across on this side. And then remember we want it to be symmetrical. So we want it to be similar on both sides. We're gonna take our pencil and we're gonna start on this side and draw, and draw kind of like a teardrop shape that's upside down or raindrop shape like that and we're going to do the same kind of design on this side now we are not photocopiers so I really do not expect it to be exact that's kind of the really cool thing about art even though we're making it symmetrical there'll be little things that are not quite exact that's okay we're not going to worry about that now, right under here, we're gonna start and we're gonna, we're gonna draw a line that kind of curves out, like, or um, goes across and then curves down and goes back, kind of like a curvy rectangle. And we're gonna do the same on this side.
And then we're gonna make a smaller one in here. And it's gonna kinda, it'll stop sooner because it, it's gonna hit that, but that's okay. Then we're just gonna kinda close off that shape. And we'll do the same thing over here. And we're gonna do a little one up here. Oops, I might change that a little bit. All right, and then down at the bottom, we're gonna start with one of those teardrop shapes starting here and kind of curving this way. And we're gonna do the same on this side. And then we're gonna have some fun little shapes in here. And if your shapes are a little different, that's okay. Start down here. Oops, I'm gonna have it be kind of flat when it gets down here. skinny piece in here. It's just kind of flat on the edges, like flat shapes. And we're gonna kind of do the same over here. This one looks like a gun gumdrop. Okay. So we are gonna add a few other shapes, but we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Let's start with our orange. So you're gonna wanna look for an orange and a yellow, maybe even a couple oranges. If you have a light orange, dark orange, I'm gonna use crayons, but you're welcome to use whatever it is you have to color with. And we're gonna start by coloring in the shapes we just drew with our orange. The monarch butterflies are known for their oranges and yellows and a little bit of white and a little bit of black and we're gonna be using those colors today. So I'm coloring in the shape, but I can have fun and blend with my yellow and my deeper orange too. So I can take that yellow, kind of add a little bit to this, and I can even take my orange, and maybe, or dark orange, I should say, and kind of add a bit to that too. I really like that. So we're gonna go ahead and color in each of these shapes that we just drew. Leave the body, because we're gonna do that black, and don't fill in anything on sort of the background of the wings, because we'll do that uh, in a little bit. I'm gonna pause the video here, and I'm gonna color in those spots too. So I finished coloring in all my shapes, and now I'm gonna add just a couple with my pencil up here that are kind of like ovals, just little skinny ovals on each side. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna also, well actually no, I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm just gonna color those shapes in first. And those are my yellow shapes. And then we're gonna add some circles and ovals. And these are gonna stay white. So we're gonna have some little shapes that are along the edge, little circular oval shapes. And they'll go just kinda up to the top. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. 
these are gonna stay white. And then we're gonna have another little row of them. Right there. And a few up top. You'll have to see how many fit. And you could even have one kind of maybe coming down a little bit. And there'll be some on the bottom edge, too. All right, and then we're gonna need our black crayon or marker. And I'm gonna leave that up to you. I'm actually gonna try it with my black marker and see how this works. I'm gonna go really gently over the antenna because I don't wanna rip them. And I just realized the, proba uh, the proboscis here is probably gonna get colored over, but that's okay. If you wanna leave a little white space around it so it shows, ooh. Be careful on the head part. Be really careful. Kind of, if you color, I would try to go in one direction toward it, toward the antenna, and that will probably help it from not ripping. And then even down at the bottom, you could kind of color towards you, like that. All right, and then I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna color everything in except for those little ovals and circles. They're gonna stay white, but the spaces around them will be black. And the spaces in between the orange shapes will also be black, like that. And this marker is kind of drying out. So I'm gonna see if I have another one that'll work a little better. That's better. It might even help if you just sort of draw around those shapes and then color in between them. And it seems like it makes it a little easier. So I'm gonna keep going with mine. Remember, leave those little ovals and circles white, and then I will come back on when I have it colored in. You're gonna keep continue. You're gonna to continue to color yours too. And I just finished coloring in the black part of both of the wings, and it looks like I have it all done. If there's anything you missed or you forgot, go ahead and you can work on it a little bit more. I can't wait to see the pictures of your work. When your monarch is all done, you're gonna have every part of it colored in except for those tiny little white ovals or circles that you put on the edges. I can't wait to see your monarchs. I'm so excited. Don't forget to take a picture and post it in the slide. See you next time.